Hello and welcome. Welcome to our service today from the Kingsthorpe Team Ministry. My name is Reverend Rachel and today's service is coming from the Vicarage here at St David's. You're very welcome to join in the service today uh, and if you can follow along the words that I'm using in the service booklet uh, that you may have at home or you can click on the link below to download the words. Today is the seventh Sunday after Trinity. During the service we'll continue to think about how the Kingdom of God grows. And we'll hear another story of Jesus about seeds and how they are used in his parables to teach us how to understand the Kingdom of God. So let's begin our worship now. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognise God's presence with us now. Let's still ourselves and light a candle to remind us that God is with us in our worship this morning. Let us worship God now together, across the miles yet joined. So let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. So we come to a time of confession where we think about the things that we are sorry for and lift them up to God now. We say together, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead. 
but now we have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father forgive you by the death of the Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. And the collect for the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We now go to our Bible readings that are set for today. A reading from Genesis, chapter 29, verses 15 to 28. Laban said to Jacob, You shouldn't work for me for nothing, just because you are my relative. How much pay do you want? Laban had two daughters. The elder was named Leah, and the younger Rachel. Leah had lovely eyes but Rachel was shapely and beautiful. Jacob was in love with Rachel, so he said, I will work seven years for you if you will let me marry Rachel. Laban answered, I would rather give her to you than anyone else. Stay here with me. Jacob worked seven years so that he could have Rachel, and the time seemed like only a few days to him because he loved her. Then Jacob said to Laban, The time is up. Let me marry your daughter. So Laban gave her a wedding feast and invited everyone. But that night, instead of Rachel, he took Leah to Jacob. And Jacob had intercourse with her. Laban gave his slave girl Zilpah to his daughter Leah as her maid. Not until the next morning did Jacob discover that it was Leah he had he went to Laban and said, Why did you do this to me? I worked to get Rachel. Why have you tricked me? Laban answered, It is not the custom here to give your younger daughter in marriage before the elder. Wait until the week's marriage celebrations are over, and I will give you Rachel, if you will work for me another seven years. Jacob agreed, and when the week of marriage celebrations were over, Laban gave him his daughter. Rachel as his wife. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He did not he who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine 
or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. Jesus also, Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in the three measures of flour, it permitted every part of the it permeated every part of the the dough. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, they dragged it onto the shore, sat down and stored sorted the good fish into crates but threw the bad ones away. This was the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand all these things? Yes, they said, we do. Then he added, every teacher of the religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who brings from his storeroom new gems of truth as well as old. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel reading this morning from Matthew is a collection of parables about the kingdom. The, co the parables can be put into three groups. The parable of the mustard seed and the yeast gives us a clear contrast of small beginnings that can lead to great effects, emphasising the power of God. These parables Jesus told to the crowd that were gathering to listen to him preach. Secondly, we have the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. That at the time would have been objects of great value. These parables speak of a commitment to teaching others about the kingdom and Jesus would have specifically been addressing the disciples. Then lastly, we have the parable of the net, which is very closely linked to the last week's gospel, the parable of the weeds. Here, the emphasis is on the present openness of the kingdom to all that enter into it and warns of the great judgment to come in the future at the end of time when the bad will be separated from the good. Firstly let's look at the mustard seed and the yeast parables. They talk about growth and the great effectness of small things in relation to the growth of the kingdom. If you ask people they might say that the real power of the kingdom is found in grand cathedrals. 
grand cathedrals that are heaving with people. They might say it's with the mass choirs, with voices of angels, or the majestic pipe organ music, filling mega places of worship. But this is not what the message that Jesus is giving when he shares these two parables. He is saying that the power of the kingdom can be found in the most humblest of places, amongst ordinary people. It can be found in the sharing of cold water, sharing of a cup of water with the homeless man huddled in the doorway. It can be found in the food bank, running from the smallest of halls. It can be found amongst church people who walk and meet with their local people. These acts might not look like much to the onlooker, but Jesus said through sharing the, these parables that these acts are powerful and will grow the kingdom. The parable of the mustard seed, probably the smallest seed that you will ever see, was only one millimetre big. But it grows. It grows into a tree or shrub that reaches two to three metres tall. So it grows from something very small into something great. The same with the yeast. It grows. It multiplies into something bigger when mixed into the flour. Just a small amount of yeast can affect a large quantity of flour. These parables send us a message today. They teach us to be patient. They teach us to be faithful. They teach us to wait. We are not likely to see God sweep through the world on a powerful stallion. No, we're more likely to find him in the quietest moments. We're likely to find him like a still voice. We won't see a sudden explosive growth in the kingdom. What we are more likely to see are small steps, small glimpses of progress. That is why it is so important that we put time and effort into welcoming the couple who are to be married at the altar. Why we should offer a hand of friendship to the child that's being baptised. And also a hand of friendship to his family too. It is why we should encourage our youth who might appear just to be having fun rather than being involved in serious discipleship activities, whatever that is. They might appear to us as insignificant in growing the kingdom, but in God's hands, they have the potential to grow. They have the potential to multiply, to become so large that they shift the world on its axis. They have the potential. But we mustn't just stand back and wait. We have to get involved. We are like the yeast. We need to get mixed up in what is happening in the world if we answer Jesus' call. If we get involved, share our faith with others. Out there, beyond the church building, the kingdom will grow. We need to be like the mustard seed and the yeast. We need to enable the growth of the kingdom. Secondly, the next two parables can contain and convey something of the huge value of the kingdom in comparison with anything else that we have in life. Pearls were valuable at the time. They were far more valuable than gold. And the parable of the dragnet, dragnet that indiscriminately catches fish, fish, both good and bad, comes with an explanation. 
it is very similar to the parable of the wheat and the weeds from last week in separating the good from the bad. But that won't happen until the end of time, to the end of the age. It's also a reminder that until that time, there will be evil, there will be bad things out there, and we will be tempted. It also reminds us that it's not for us to judge. God will do the judging. We should spend our time emphasising joy, proclaiming the good news, the good news of the gospel. Condemnation convinces few people. Call to duty falls on deaf ears. Call to joy makes people sit up. It makes them listen. It makes them respond more positively. In fact, if we draw in all people, both what we consider to be the desirable and the undesirable, don't forget Jesus didn't just call the desirable, he called the undesirable too. We need to just take time, time to share with them, share with them our faith, share with them our love, share with them the joy of knowing Jesus. Watch, just watch some of those that we consider to be undesirable. They grow into genuine kingdom people. Jesus was telling the disciples of then and telling us today that it's not our place to keep out the riffraff. He will separate the good from the bad, the evil from the righteous, that's his job and he will do that at the end of time. Lastly, we have the parable that teaches about the kingdom. It talks about the scribes. The scribes were those that interpreted God's instructions in the scriptures in order that people would know how to live in God's way. This parable may indicate that in the kingdom, those who have been trained in kingdom ways, the disciples, would draw on the Jewish heritage that they have, knowing God's ways, the old way. But at the same time, they will also draw on the new things that Jesus is showing them, the new way. So let's sum up a little bit. This chapter of parables can be a challenging read. Firstly, what do the parables mean? And what are they asking us to do? If we put on our scholarly hat, do a Bible study, and pick them to pieces, yes, we might understand them, but then if we don't do nothing, then that understanding is totally worthless. But if we act without thinking through the message that Jesus wanted us to receive, then that too can be a very tiring task and very often not very fruitful. So as we read the stories, the parables that Jesus shares, we should ask ourselves, what is the message that he was saying? Then what is the message he wants us to hear? He has trained us to be scribes, to be scribes of today, to grow the kingdom today. Are we thinking 
Are we speaking? And are we living out our faith? Yes, we should be learning from our roots, roots of old, but at the same time, we need to be working, we need to be living and sharing the joys of the gospel in the modern world so that the kingdom continues to grow and bear the new fruits of today. Now affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. So we say together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, on the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who was spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now to come to a time of intercession where we intercede for others in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, meet us in the silence and hear our prayer. O 
Almighty God, hear our prayers that we offer to you in his name, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, work within us and among us to bring your kingdom into this world. Let your will be done so that all people may live only for your praise and glory. Keep before us the vision of church communities where people of different church backgrounds will work and worship together harmoniously and where those who seek to know more about the Christian faith will find a welcome. Give us a clear understanding of the work you have set before us and a fresh commitment to your service in the coming times ahead. Giving wisdom to our ministers and leadership team and may our witness and commitment in Kingsport continue to grow. And at times, Lord, we are guilty and spend too much of our time trying to build up our own human kingdom, kingdom, putting ourselves rather than you the centre of our lives. Send your spirit to remind us that you are first and everything else is secondary. Lord, hear our prayer. Come and listen to me. Almighty God, we praise you and grant us a vision of the world that, as you love and you would have it. A world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor. A world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them. A world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect. A world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and courage to stand up and bring pressure upon our representative elected leaders that this becomes the norm. So we pray for the renewal of a spirit of humility all over the world and the sense of responsibility among our leaders. That the hungry will be fed and the oppressed will be freed to live in peace. Lord, hear our prayer. Come and listen to me. Holy God, we pray for our, your church, especially here in Kingsthorpe. Our clergy, our licensed ministers, our church wardens and officials, and all those who serve on our PCC. We express our thanks to you for all those who provided our many different services during these unusual times. For those who assist the clergy, and pray for all of our congregation, both young and senior in age. We give thanks for the many initiatives being explored in all of our churches, bringing your kingdom in different ways to those seek. Lord, hear our prayer. Come and listen to me. Heavenly Father, your Son, Lord Jesus Christ, taught us the importance of heaven and its treasures. You asked us to seek first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. Lord, Bless us and our churches with heavenly treasures. Give us the grace to cherish heavenly treasures more than earthly treasures. And may nothing separate us from the heavenly treasures. For you live and reign for ever and ever. We thank you for the example of leadership given to us by your Son. In his life on earth, Jesus went about teaching the world. He took his time to explain to your disciples the mystery of God's kingdom. Indeed, you are all we could possibly ask for, and we pray, Lord, that we have so many teachers in the world today, and we ask, Lord, that you bless our schools with good and good-fearing teachers, selfless teachers like you. May this break of summer give all the teachers the peace and rest they deserve during this period of lockdown and great change. We ask that you will be with all of our students as they await their exam results, and may they all be pleased with their efforts. And we pray for the children going up to new classes, new schools, where it has not been possible for their usual transfer days. Lord, hear our prayer. Come and listen to me. Mighty God, we thank you for your love and compassion for all who suffer in, in body, mind and spirit. For those who are lonely and depressed, and pray that we may be good listeners when friends and neighbours need us. We pray for your healing presence would calm their fears, ease their pain and bring light into the darkness of all who are sick. And we pray that you will be with us and all who need your loving touch at this time. 
and in the quietness of your own mind, we pray that we ask that you bring before God all those specially known to you. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which has no darkness can quench. We remember before you, God, all who have gone before us, remembering that the light of Christ which eternally shines and brings hope. And we remember now those specially known to us. You turn our darkness into light, and into your light we see light. Lord, hear our prayer. Come and listen to me. Let us bring our thoughts and our prayers together now in the words that Jesus taught us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. We now come to the part of the service that is a spiritual communion. So you may like to have a cup and a saucer ready to hold as we get to the communion part of the service. Jesus says, listen, I'm standing at the door knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you, and you with me. Lord, our God, you prepare a table before us, and although we cannot be present at your holy Eucharist, by your grace, open our hearts to receive the gift of your Son, the Word made flesh. Father, we give you thanks and praise, always and everywhere, and in these days of Trinity, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. And by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in us the image of your glory. His place then once more in paradise, and open to them the gate of life eternal. And also in the joy of this holy communion, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing for heaven the hymn of your glory. We say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, that though separated by distance, we may still, through faith, be partakers in the benefits of Christ's offering of his body and his blood. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We say together, 
Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen.
Let us pray. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite in us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sing with me, and can it be? And can it be that I
final blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always, this day and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining me this morning for this act of worship and for sharing in the spiritual communion. If you'd like to join us for more services this week, you'll find details about morning prayer and Compline on our website. And if you'd like details about the opening of church churches for private prayer, uh, the times are also there on the website. So visit us please at Kingsthorpe Team Ministry. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.